All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech and our continued coverage of the ASUS Republic of Gamers um, Maximus 5 Gene. This motherboard we've taken a look at, it's their Micro ATX motherboard that's in the Republic of Gamers lineup. It's sort of the gateway or entry point into the Republic of Gamers. Now we're going to take a look at the UEFI BIOS that's underneath it. Um, this is going to be the next generation. ASUS has had a really good uh, effort on their UEFI BIOSes. When you first get into it, the thing you're going to run into is you're going to see the advanced mode. This is unlike some of the other ones where they have the easy mode. You automatically are going to go into advanced mode. And, you know, you do have some options here. We've talked about this before. Of course, you can hit F12 and do a print screen as long as you're using a FAT32 formatted USB key that's in there when you, when you boot up. It's going to go ahead and save it directly to that as a BMP or bitmap format. Those are pretty large, so if you want to send them across the Internet or want to post them up online, you may want to uh, change those over to JPEG. So we're going to take a look at this. One of the first things we'll show you is, of course, the shortcut keys. This is going to take you anywhere you want very quickly. So you hit your shortcuts keys. You want to go to graphics configuration. You just go there, and it's going to take you straight into it. So you can hit back, or if you want, you can actually hit uh, escape, and it'll take you back out. Of course, we don't want an exit. Or you could hit F3 again and go to exactly where you want. So this is a nice feature that will get you to exactly where you need to be in, in very quick fashion or you can just click around with your mouse. Now one of the things we, we can see here is you do have different profiles that you can load. Here you have your CPU level up, which are, for our purposes, uh, the overclock that we ran on this for our testing uh, wasn't needed. Of course, we are, are running an Ivy Bridge processor, so that's not a big surprise since you know this is actually the launch date. You're gonna see these come out. We have our 3770K in here. We were able to get it up to 4.8 gigahertz, which is a nice OC. So far, that seems to be about the limit, at least as far as with the boards that we've tested up to this point. This is the second one, in addition to the Intel DZ77GA70K. Um, you know, going back through some of these, of course, one of the things that we found is that when you do scroll, it's going to scroll e through each individual setting, which is nice. You know, you can't get back and forth through there. We also noticed that when you click on something, it's going to put you exactly where you need to be very quickly. We like this. Um, you have some Maximus tweaks, which are also very nice. You have mode one, mode two. It's going to let you. Uh, it's just going to adjust some of the memory settings here. You know, getting into memory. But uh, getting back to the responsiveness, this BIOS is as responsive as the one that we saw on on Intel's motherboard. And we like that in that you don't have to worry about where you're clicking. As long as you're clicking somewhere on this, it's going to get you into that field. We haven't seen that with every single motherboard we've tested. And that's become a problem where you're having to quick, click again or bounce back and forth or maybe double click to get into those settings. All right, so now we'll go back to uh, back and we'll cover the actual uh, pieces in the BIOS. Of course, you can see here our IGP frequency is set to 1250. That's going to be the default. We did manually set our memory. You can go through here. You can see you can run it up to 3200. Uh, this is going to be with some of that trace tuning that we talked about and that new... Uh, T trace tuning that, that they're working on that's going to allow you to have even higher frequencies of memory that are going to run off of these systems. Uh, but for right now, for our purposes, we, of course, we set it to 1600. You can change your uh, bus speed to RAM ratio. So here your bus is going to be uh, 100 or, and your memory speed is going to be 1333 or you can set up your, you know, set it to auto which is going to allow you to change things in here. So like if we take that, then you can see our different multipliers here and where it's going to put us individually. Or if we set it to 1 to 100, you see that's going to get us just those 100 megahertz options. Auto gives you pretty much the best of both worlds. It can let you choose but in between those. However, you may have, a diff have better performance potential and better overclocking potential if you hard set this to one or the other, depending upon your CPU and the memory you're using. Here you have your GPU DIMM post. This is going to show you what GPU you have in and what DIMMs you have in and what channels they're in at the moment. CPU power management, we've covered this before. It's going to be pretty much the same type of uh, stuff that you see on other boards. It's just going to be in the uh, ASUS's ROG setup. Digi power control here. You're going to have your lo uh, line, load line calibration. You have different lo uh, load line calibrations, ones for CPU, one for the I IGP. And you also have uh, down here, you have ones for DRAM. You have your fr switching frequencies, your full phase control. You have a lot of options in here that are just going to give you better possibilities for overclocking your CPU. Some of these are going to require that you really push forward on your cooling. Uh, the Ivy Bridge processor does get hot. It's going to get hot pretty quickly. Yes, it has a higher TJ Maxx than what you're used to under Sandy Bridge, 
You can go all the way up to 105 uh, C, but you're going to hit that pretty quick, and at 105 C, you're done. It's going to shut down, and you also risk damaging the processor because it is on that much smaller uh, process. Right, going through here, you can see you know, your different voltage options here. And it's going to either be yellow for a warning, pink for, you know, you're getting kind of high, or red for, we don't recommend it. And as usual, you are able to manually enter things. You're not going to have an option to get a drop-down menu, which is nice. And of course, you can run these in either manual or offset mode, which is pretty typical and, and common amongst the different boards that are out there. So that covers everything in the Extreme Tweaker. We're going to now look at main. This is going to be your main information, your BIOS version, uh, your build version, exactly what date it was built on, EC versions, bridge, south bridge stepping. These are all going to be listed here, which is nice. You can get to see this information at a glance. You can see that, of course, we have our i7-3770K and what its initial speed is, as well as the memory we've got in there and the memory frequency it's running at. You have your options for uh, security, which ne we have neither one of those set up. And then we'll move on to advanced. Under advanced, you have some of the same settings that you saw under the extreme tweaker. Uh, they just happen to be linked. Here you see the adaptive thermal monitor, which is going to allow you to adjust the uh, voltages as well as power that's going back and forth to make sure that you stay inside that TJ Maxx and you don't damage the processor. Hyper threading, which is running multiple threads per core, uh, up to two threads per core right now. Your active processor cores, you could shut this all the way down to one if you wanted to or run three. A CPU ID limit, you know, maximum. You can limit that here for boot, so it's not going to go over that. Um, execute disable virtualization technology which unless you're going to run something like VMware or VirtualBox there's no need to have that turned on then you have your power management which again we saw when we were over here in the uh, extreme tweaker back up towards the top so let's see CPU power management it's going to be the same page so that covers that and we're going to now move on to our monitoring in here you have your basic monitoring, your voltage, you're going to have your temperature, CPU and motherboard, fan speed monitor, it's going to show you the fans there, and you also have your fan speed control. This is your, going to be your Q fan. These are nice in that they allow you to adjust your fan, but not just under the standard profiles. You have multiple profiles, including a manual profile. This is ASUS's Q fan controls. These are nice. You can do this per 4-pin PWM fan header that's on the board. You have quite a few of those that are going to be listed here. And you see you have a you know, CPU fan, you have chassis, uh, chassis 1, chassis 2, and chassis 3 that are going to be all available here just for you to adjust. And then of course you also have your, um, your fan expert 2 that's going to be on, on the board and run through the uh, AI suite 2. You can set those automatically and it will automatically build a profile for you. Here's going to be your, your boot options. You know, you have your different, uh, you, you can set up your boot option priorities where they're going to reside. So when you push your boot menu, what, you know, what is it going to pop up? And here's your uh, boot override order. So you can change this, save the configuration and reset. We can get all this stuff out and basically override the boot settings that we have. You can see our different boot options during the normal. And of course we have, you know, are we going to disable the UEFI? Are we going to disable legacy or, or do we want both? The typical one is going to be both. You have your setup mode, advanced or easy mode, so you can go back and forth as to which one you drop into. The default is going to be dropping you right into that advanced mode. And of course you have your tools, your easy flash, which will allow you to flash from a USB key where you can use your USB BIOS flashback. You have your OC profiles that you can set up. Your SPD information, which is going to show you the type of memory that's in here and what its SPD information is. Here's your JDEC spec. This is something that we talked about when we were talking about the actual chipset when we first discussed this board. The JDEC configuration is going to be what the standard is. If it's DDR3 and it's set for 1333, this is going to be the configuration. This is the voltage it needs to run at and these are the timings it needs to run at. What you're going to see is that most of your 1600 megahertz memory is going to run under an XMP or extended memory profile. Here's that setting. 1.65, 1600, and then of course you have your different uh, memory timings. Later on this year, uh, we're going to see memory that's going to come out where 1600 megahertz is going to be the JDEC spec. We'll see memory from Kingston, we'll see memory from G-Skill, OCZ, all the major manufacturers will come out with this. So when you drop these uh, memory modules in, they're going to automatically default to 1600 megahertz. 
if you see somebody who's saying the boards don't fully support 1600 megahertz as they're advertised, they're not being 100% accurate. They do support it, but in every RAM module there's an SPD or a serial presence device that's going to say, hey, here's what my defaults are. So it's going to pop in at 1333 because it's a configuration in the memory, not a configuration on the board. These boards do support 1600 by default. However, there's no memory that supports that as a default profile. All right, so that covers pretty much everything that we've got here in the BIOS. And we're going to go ahead and continue on. We'll show you exactly how this board performs. And we, uh, we hope to have quite a bit more from ASUS in the lab here soon. So thank you for watching. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Be sure to share it with your friends. And if you want to, you know, please subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.